So, we have another edition of Smoking Hot Conversation with Comedians. And we have with us t- today Jason Klingman, known as JK to his fans and friends. Jason Klingman is from Hopewell, but he's also been known to hang out in Petersburg. Right. In fact, one of his claims to fame is he is the man who brought funny to Petersburg. Right. Specifically, Wabi Sabi's yes. comedy night. Yes, which has become uh, an extravaganza of sorts. The cavalcade of comedy. The cavalcade of comedy. Yes, it's the uh, first Friday of every month down in Wabi Sabi, Petersburg, on 29 Bolingbrook Street. And uh, doing comedy for about a year, year and a half. I started off at a really small place called the Dixie Diner. And then I did it at coffee houses, and then I went to Wabi Sabi, and it just kind of clicked there. Now, you're talking about you as an individual or the show? Me as an individual. I just started doing it by myself. When did you get the idea for the show? Uh, for for, the, for the, the cavalcade? Yeah. Um, basically, I just wanted to bring more comedy to Petersburg. It was a niche that needed to be filled. I mean, you can throw a rock and hit up somebody in a band. So um, I figured we need to bring comedy down there. And then I started coming to Richmond and doing shows here and uh, met a bunch of cool comedians. And I was like, hey, man, just come down to Petersburg. Which at first I thought nobody would ever come. And then they came, and now it's become somewhat of a thing, I guess they say these days. Packed houses. Packed houses. Um, a lot of laughter uh, and a lot of fun, man. And. Uh, the owner, DJ Payne, is an awesome guy. We and, want to uh, thank DJ for his numerous uh, benefices, exactly. for, for being a great host. And you are a part of the first one. Yeah, Jeff Curran. And Jeff Curran, Mar- Marquise Jeter was in the first one. Uh, and Damon... Ison. Damon Ison. I-S-O-M. All right. And uh, since then, it's become uh, a lot greater and... Not that the first one wasn't great, but it's becoming awesome, man, and I look forward to it every month. I'm trying to talk to a bunch of owners, a bunch of clubs down there, and I'm trying to get more comedy there as, as much as possible. So, you know, and I brought guys down because that means I get to do, I have to talk, I can talk less, and people still laugh. Well, you're so. the MC. Right. And I, I think you're a very dynamic MC, too. I learned that from MC Hammer. <laughs> So you had no public speaking experience before you started doing Oh, no, no, I have a, a lot of public speaking experience. I um, did uh, a lot of theater growing up, and I gave a, a lot of speeches uh, growing up. I was the president of like many of my classes in high school, and school president, if you can believe that, and I had to give a lot of speeches, and I did a bunch of uh, essays and stuff growing up, you know, trying to win $25 you know, gift certificates and whatnot to buy candy. It was good training. Yeah, it was good training. Um, but comedy is a whole different beast, man. <laughs> In, uh, you care to elaborate on that? Uh, well, because if you're writing uh, a, on a topic, you're not expecting much from the audience, you know, just intent listening. Oh, well, with comedy, you, you have to get something from the crowd. You know, you have to uh, involve them in your comedy and hopefully get some laughter out of them, uh, which I've found to be more addictive than heroin. But I, I've never even done heroin that I know of. But I've been hanging out in Richmond a lot lately, so I might have got stuck. Start doing I might have got stuck once or twice. Uh, I understand you get some good deals in Gilpin Court. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, on Meadow Street as well. Yeah, yeah on Meadow Street. That's what I've heard. Half a block from the police station, that's where, that's you where will I'm... get people that will come up to you and they will say, Are you all right? And that, what, that, that, is, that is parlance for, like, do you want to buy something? So I just want to give a big shout out to the Richmond Police Department and the drug, the war on drugs, which is doing so well. Well, you find the best drugs near the police department. Yeah. Always. Yeah, it's always right under your nose is where the best stuff so, is. Literally, and, under your nose. And I, I want to shout out to the Richmond City Fathers, whose solution to all this is to build a bigger jail. Yes, of course. But I digress. So we've talked about how you got into comedy. We've talked about why you got into comedy, because you find it addictive, it's fun. Right. The next question would be, what are your influences? And if that seems unfair, then who would you admire as a stand-up comedian? Uh, I admire a whole lot of stand-up comedians. Uh, I think my biggest influences were more uh, comedic actors, such as uh, like John Belushi, 
and, uh, and Dan Aykroyd and stuff. When I was young, my dad used to have Blues Brothers, Animal House, and Porky's on rotate for some reason while I was always in the living room. So I think, that had, a, I think that had a huge impact on my comedy. Um, but stand up, man, it's just too many, too many to count, man. Um, you know, of course, like Richard Pryor and uh, all, all the big names from the 80s had a huge impact on me. Um, I'm a big Bill Hicks fan. Um, he's a genius, in my opinion. Uh, Mitch Hedberg fan. Uh, I don't know, man. Whole lot of. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Saturday Night Live and, and skit shows and stuff like that, so I might try doing improv one day. You never know. Well, there's always Fool's Day, which is. It's Funny Bone. I've heard. I'll Masterminded have... by our own Ray Bullock. Yes. I need to check that out. I'm just always at work. Which, uh, working a night job does not go hand in hand with doing comedy, I found out. There's not yeah. many daytime comedy shows. It'll even get you suspended. It will. And it did. But then you get to hang out with Andy Dick, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That happened last week. That's one, I guess, one good thing about doing comedy for free. You get to hang out with cool people sometimes. I think... That's I wish I wish we would see more of that because it's like there were people on Facebook kicking themselves because they didn't go to that show. Right. And I think if there was more of that, if like people like Andy dropped by, there was more of that sort of surprise element. People yeah. would show up. Well, I think that's happening in Richmond. I mean, I'm, I'm an outsider, and I just I've been doing the class of the comics at the Funny Bone for about for about a year, but I didn't even know so about all the other So when do you mics. become an insider? I mean, well, I mean, because I, 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 I mean, I've done. You're participating in the Clash of the Titans. You you've right. won. You've but I'm talking won. about in the in the Richmond scene, man. The gritty. You see yourself as an outsider? No, I mean, I mean, I'm not from here. That's what I mean by that. But I mean, Ooh, I've only I've done Cafe Diem three times, and I and I've only uh, done. Uh, you didn't fall out. Done fall out. I only did that once. You know what I mean? But um, I, I mean, I just look at it is that the scene that since I've come in to Richmond doing shows like actually in Richmond not at the funny bone in the last three or four months I could see the scene you know growing just from you know being unbiased and seeing what's going on and I, I think it's awesome I think we have a great group of comedians everybody seems to be cool with each other that I can see and uh, I don't know it's very enjoyable well, I, think, I don't know as I said I don't get the outside of uh, I just mean because I'm not from here, Chris. I'm not an outsider. I'm an insider. <laughs> but you're part of the Central Virginia comedy That's scene. That's true. It's like it's one big happy family, right? There are no factions. There's no bickering. There's no, no. backbiting. There's no a lot of backstabbing. There's no yeah because they're all too drunk to engage in any of those things. <laughs> That's true. They can barely get out of bed. It's uh, tough for me today. Uh, okay, so we've asked. Um, see, we need. See, we need that's that's what you could do. You could be our cue cord card cue cord boy. So you could hold cue cord cue cord boy. You could hold like a, a cardboard thing up here. But no, I can't read it. It has to be big letters. That's Joshua Sassier behind the camera. And incidentally, Still. incidentally, videotaping this is Silver Persinger, the Ken Burns of music and comedy in Richmond, but possibly expanding to future larger areas. So, uh, we, you see, you anticipated, you read my mind. I was going to ask you about the Central Virginia comedy scene, and you've already talked about that. We've talked about Wabi Sabi. However, what we have not talked about, and we screwed up the order, but we're, we're going to forge on anyway. You never asked me how I get into comedy. How did you get into comedy? Is that what you were going to ask me just now? No. Oh. I was going to ask you about your radio show. Oh, uh, we can do that too. But how did well, you get into comedy? I got into comedy because of uh, radio. I was on a show called The Frickin', the Frickin Frack, Frack Show. show. I am a friend of the Frickin' Frack Show on MySpace, well, along with a lot is, of porn is. stars, <laughs> models, and I say models in, in, in like air quotes, right. and so on. Well, um, the Frickin' Frack Show is, is, is no longer with us. Yeah. Uh, we buried it about a month and a half, two months ago, because some of the guys involved have kids that are married. You know, and so it's, they have uh, a life in other Exactly, ways. like a real life. Um, but, uh, it helps not to have a life to be yes, in stand comedy. Now my two friends were the hosts of the show and they asked me to come on because I told them I was thinking about doing comedy and I, I started writing commentaries uh, for that show and then one day I was just like, man, I gotta, I gotta get on stage and try this stuff out and uh, I did it at a really small little bar in Petersburg and I got a good reception and um, I mean I was nervous as hell but uh, after that, man, I've just been trying to do it more and more and uh, and you sucked Adam into it too. It's sort of like the mafia. I did. It's like I try to get out, but they keep yes. bringing me back in. Yes, uh, Adam Klebenstein is, is who we uh, speak of, who 
shoots photography all around. I think he does some nude modeling. <laughs> He's actually a nude model, and he photographs himself. Actually, I I, I did do a I shot a nude model on Belle Isle, believe it or not. I do, I do believe that. Yeah, I'll will send you the link to my my photo those photographs on Flickr <laughs> because I paid three hundred dollars for that session, and I'm going to get my freaking fracking freaking frack money's worth out of those photographs. That was like five years ago, but I'm still... I don't know if I want to see these. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> these, these, are, these are what they call in the trade artistic nudes. See, there's like no, this is not gyno stuff, this is like artistic. See? <laughs> What's the difference between artistic nudes and pornography? I have no idea, but... Not much. Yeah, not much. In my opinion. But, um... Yeah, and then, uh... Freaking Frack okay, So, has Adam really done nude photography? No, no, no. Oh, well, I know... I know, I know <laughs> would be for probably inflation is... Adjusted for inflation, it would cost more. Yeah. But anyway... But he, he has done a lot of big names. He did Mitch Fattel, right? He did Mitch right? Fattel. I think he's uh, gonna photograph uh, Ralphie May when he comes in a few weeks. Uh, a couple other big names, you know, he's, he's, and he takes really good pictures, and he's doing a good job, and uh, he was the PR guy for the Frickin' Frack show, and the tech guy, and I was the comedian, and that show kind of evaporated, and I, I had my own show going at the time, which is the Jason Klingman show, on Thursdays at 9 o'clock, WHAP, 1340 AM, and, uh, which you interview comedians, right, I interview comedians, and we just talk about what's going on in the world, and Adam is my co-host, and, um, it's really fun, man. I mean, it's a small station, but it's it's, it's really fun, and I'm um, starting to get some feedback from it. And uh, well, you're on the internet too. Let's point that out. Yes, at uh, 1340whap.com every Thursday at nine o'clock, man. Check it out. Uh, it's it's a fun time. Have comedians call in, um, and I have comedians come on the show if they want to drive all the way down there. And uh, it's just it's fun, man. And it, it actually gives me a good platform to write jokes. It's kind of like... Um, I have Did you do a, a monologue before before the you, you interview the guests? Uh, kind of, yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, and I just, you know, I, I look at what's going on in the world and I, it's kind of like I, I have a deadline to make jokes by. And it's, sometimes I turn those jokes into jokes on stage and sometimes I just leave them on the radio. But um, I, uh, before I even started doing comedy... Do you I, have like a seven minute, I mean a seven minute... <laughs> You all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this caffeine is starting to get to yeah, me. Yeah, I'm, I'm jacked up. Incidentally, we're, 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 this, is being in, this is being done at the Lamplighter Cafe yeah. and Roasting Company. And I don't normally drink coffee, so this is uh, I'm no feel, booty holes. Crazy. No booty holes were harmed in the making of this podcast. Speak for yourself. Uh, and this is in Richmond, Virginia, and it is July the 11th, 2010. This podcast is not safe for work. But, and we're not roasting, this is a roasting company, but we're not roasting Jason tonight. No, but I wish we did more roasts, because the roast of Blake that was roast great. That roast was great. I think no, more people need to leave town so we can roast them. I can think of several people I'd like to leave, they would, I would like to see leave town. <laughs> <laughs> leave the state. Forget the town. Leave the state. Well, that was a great night. And, but uh, uh, thanks to Joe Happy for putting that together because that yes. was a great, great night of comedy. Joe's one of our sponsors of this podcast. I don't know oh, is he? Do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is a student at VCU. He barely has enough money to. That's true. Yeah. I've been a student at VCU once. But getting back to the radio show, it's also available as a podcast on Podbean, right? Yes. What's the uh, Earl? What's the Earl? And we're not talking about my name is Earl. We're talking about U R L. Well, we're in. We're changing it over to uh, JasonKlingman.com. I have that. It's pretty much up, but it's not finalized. And we're going to start putting the shows and the backlog of all the shows on JasonKlingman.com, and um, you can check it out there. And we're going to try to get the live stream on there on the actual uh, nights of the show. But as of right now, you can live stream it on 1340WHAP.com. Though you seem to have problems with Mozilla Firefox for some reason. Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't like Mozilla Firefox. So use Explorer, use Chrome. Right. But we're, just, we're trying to get worked out. We're trying to defrag or whatever and get it on, on my website and, uh, and go from there. Mm -hmm. But I am computer illiterate, so I have to have people help me. 
Personally, I like pot bean. I think that I think it's a good. It's it's the best. I mean, I've looked at Buzzsprout. I've looked at several other, um, you know, podcast distributors or publishers or whatever you want to call them. Right. And is it available through iTunes? Uh, not as of yet. Okay. But being that, because so, I usually uh, work a lot. Yeah. So that's like one of your list of things to right, do. Right. But I have some free time right now, so I'll be getting that done probably in the next few days. Probably tonight after this coffee I'm drinking, I'll be up till four in the morning. Okay. Probably. This is like my third cup right here. Is that why you're so jittery? Because I went to, uh, because I'm high on life. I'm high on life. I've never tried that. It's like you know. I, I Where mean, do you get that at? <laughs> Gilpin Lock Court. Police station. <laughs> Next to the police station. <laughs> the, yeah, the third precinct. <laughs> I've had run-ins with those people. How do you do life? Do you do you eat it? Do you inject it? Do you smoke it? <laughs> It'll kill you in the end, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've, I've had run-ins. I've had run-ins with the third precinct. Uh, I used to I used to have a vigil at the, um, the statue on... Uh, um, uh, um, you did vigils? Yeah, I did a vigil on, uh, on um, a Stonewall Jackson statue. What were the, were the vigils for Stonewall Jackson? No, again, Stonewall Jackson. Oh, okay. okay. And I, I had an officer, a fine officer from the third <laughs> precinct, come along and You're tell me. You're saying number one with your middle finger. Yeah, tell me that uh, he had the ability to violate my uh, Second Amendment uh, or First Amendment or Third Amendment uh, right to free speech and to get the hell off the statue, he would arrest me. So this goes, this is a shout out to all the First Amendment Bill of Rights supporters at the third precinct. In Richmond, Virginia. Oh, well, the Constitution doesn't even matter anymore. No, I was not, saying, not apparently to the Richmond Police Department. I want to come out with uh, U.S. Constitution toilet paper because that's pretty much what we're doing with it. Yeah, that's what the ass. Richmond Police Department does it, with it. I'm Eat not, me, Richmond Police Department! I'm not a big fan of, of cops either. I so hate I cops. You on that. I hate cops. Yeah. I hate cops. You're scum! My, my name You're is not, scum! My name is not Jason Kling. My name what? is Chris Martin. What? <laughs> <laughs> My name what? Is Travis Charles. Yeah, if you're what? watching. <laughs> Jason Klingman loves cops. My name is Tracy Morgan. <laughs> no. <laughs> seriously. 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 I'm a card carrying member of the ACLU, so I ain't worried. I tore my ACLU once. <laughs> Never got right back into comedy. It took me six months. I like to worship at the Homo Sistine Chapel. That's a medical reference. Over my head, man. Like yeah. a kite. Homocysteine, spelled H-O-M-O-C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. Uh, gotcha. But I digress. I digest. So, and you say you've never done improv. Not really. I mean, you know, in high school I did some stuff, some theater work and stuff like that, which is kind of improv, but I, I enjoy doing it. Um, there's actually some guys from here... Uh, going to Second City in Chicago, some comedians, and they're going to Mari Brown Omari and, and John, John Reeves. Reeves, and they they said I can come along, but now, no! but now, how cool is that? Yeah, but as uh, my money situation is oh, not cool okay. right now, so you've been suspended. right, I think I'm just going to go start. It all comes down to Andy Dick. That's what life comes down to, really. I'm going to uh, just start selling my body, I think, on Jeff Davis, because at this point in time, I can get you know 50 cents an hour. <laughs> 50 cents. There's a there, that could be your name, Fifty Cent. No, no. I haven't been shot. And I've you, been shot at, but I haven't been shot. Do you walk with a limp? Sometimes <laughs> depends. Depends if I had sex the night before. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on that. I heard they call you tripod. They do. <laughs> I actually broke my leg growing up playing soccer, but it's okay because I got three. Okay. So I got right back on the field. <laughs> this is degenerated somewhat. <laughs> But uh, if you never hear from me again, you'll know why. But um, <laughs> the cops got him. That's right. No, no. What? What? what, what I lost my train of thought. And what I wanted to say was, what happened to that nice Ice Cube? You know, he just used, used to do these great shows, great songs like "Fuck the Police." Oh, Ice and, Cube. And, and, and now he's doing. And that, that's your bit. I have a bit somebody, about that. Yeah, it's like now he's doing these things like "Are We There Yet?" Right. Or whatever. I mean, well, Ice Cube. Shot. Ice Cube was in N.W.A. Yeah, which right. Which is N-word with attitude. Yeah. And. Uh, talking about hating cops and now he he is a cop 
on certain movies and just TV like, shows. And just like, like um, Ice T, who had a song about cop killing, and he's now a detective on CSI wherever or something. And LL Cool J, who was never that hard, but he was a rapper, and now he's a detective. So the whole world is just flipping on its head right now. I'm not worried about global warming. I'm worried about rappers not being hard anymore. So really, you know, if Malcolm X were around today, he'd probably be a member of the Westchester Country Club, right? It's possible. That uh, seems to be the way it's going right now. Yeah. If Jim Morrison was alive today, he'd be a rapper. <laughs> Jim Morrison is alive today. That's right. Actually, Jim Morrison, Biggie Smalls, and Tupac are recording an album in Cuba. It's going to come out in 2015, after the world ends, I believe. That's what oh, I hear. It's, it's not the Buena Vista Social Club. Is, is it the no. Gitmo Social Club? Yeah. I think Elvis is going to do a cameo. Costello? Um, Presley? Presley. Costello, maybe. Posse might drop. I want to do a movie with Jenna Presley. No, it's not Jenna Presley. It's Presley Maddox, I think. Presley Maddox. I'm not when familiar. Did, when, when did... Uh, Tegan Presley. I'll Tegan. Do, uh, Tegan. I'll Tegan do, Presley. I'll do oh, a movie okay. with Tegan Presley. When did Presley become like a porn nom de plum? I'm a fan of Jamie Presley. Yeah, I am too. Did you Did you see her? Uh, oh, I've seen her. <laughs> I've seen her in many ways. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> nah, some movies. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what was that one she did with Adam Sandler? Uh, uh, I don't Joe see Dirt. I only see the ones that she gets naked in, and that Joe, wasn't that Joe was Dirt. that wasn't Adam Sandler. That was Dave, Dave, they're interchangeable. David Spade. What's the difference between Adam Sandler and Dave uh, David Spade, Spade and Dana Carver? It's like has been SNL people who make awful movies for you know large sums of money. Yeah, I heard his new movie. Grown That's Ups like a category on Jeopardy. That's the moment at which Chris Martin launched his career. <laughs> which one? Which Chris Martin? Uh, I don't know, but me and you did tag team Gwyneth Paltrow in a bus station. Yeah, I thought that was a train that we did. Pull the train. Yeah, I think that's, I don't know what they call it. They call it DP. I'm not, we, did, we did a DP in the BP. <laughs> <laughs> on, on POV angle. No that, that, would be, that would be, that would be, no, that would be like a, a TMI, too much information. Right. Well, thanks for that image. <laughs> that's why I'm here, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all educational. No harm, no foul. Incidentally, uh, who, who's who's the friend of uh, um, who's the friend of, uh, of Chris Big Martin's? Bad. No, the guy who did those movies uh, was it Simon Pegg who did uh, did um, the zombie movie in Hot Fuzz? Hot, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he did a movie with uh, um, with what's her face? Coffee's kicking in, huh? Yeah, he did a movie, What's Her Face, about a talk show uh, in New York City. Man, oh, what, that what's sucked. Her face? I want my money back. I want my money back on that movie. It was with, with some, it was it was about... You can't even remember the name. That's how much I can't, it sucked. Yeah, it, it came after Hot Fuzz and the zombie movie. Shaun of the Dead. Oh, okay. It came after those. And he's like a buddy of Chris Martin's. The other Chris Martin. Okay. Not the Chris Martin who's a stand-up comedian. But the Chris Martin, who's the lead singer of Coldplay, and right. he's married to Gwyneth Paltrow. Right. And boy, was that movie suckalicious. Well, I want my money back for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have my money back for this podcast? <laughs> no. I mean, it's only two dollars. Because it's going to my bail, baby. <laughs> oh, nice. When are you getting arraigned, anyway? <laughs> Let's still put a visual on right now. Let's put a visual around that stop sign. How I hate stop signs. When nobody's coming, I should be able to roll through them. So, um, have we run out of things to talk about? There's never run out of things to talk about, man. Let's talk about coffee. Talk so, about what's going to be your comedy catchphrase? Do you have one yet? Like, get her done? Or, nah, I don't You know, know, Craig Ferguson says it's a great day in America. And on this, on smoke, well, we don't say this. We don't have a, see, we don't have a, on... On the, uh, uh, you're losing me. On the Cracker Jokia podcast, we like to say life changing insights into the comedy industry. Right. Well, when I did, but crack, we don't we don't have we don't have a catchphrase for uh, smoking hot yet. Well, my, my catchphrase when I was on the radio, uh, it was it was called One Man's Opinion. It was my segment where I rant about things I hate. And, well, that's um, what we just did. Right. And uh, but at the end of the thing, I would say I'm Jason Klingman and you're not. Which is that was sort of isn't that Chevy Chase. Wait. No, I know. Now you're that's not it. No, now well, I, the coffee is kicking in. I, I, never, I never even said that on the radio. I said this is one. This is one man's opinion, and now it's yours. That was my tag. Okay, I just well, ruined that's, everything. That's Sorry, funny. Chevy. 
Who's a bank now, by the way, which is actually weird. <laughs> how do you parlay <laughs> SNL into a bank? I don't know how he did that, but he did it. Big ups to Chevy. <laughs> My money back for Fletch, too, though. He's a car. <laughs> See, you he, said, there's Chevy, and then there's Chevy. Right. And then there's Chowder, and then there's Chives. What? <laughs> <laughs> Me. How'd you get the name Silver anyway? We've probably discussed this before, but my parents, 1972, San Francisco. I was in San Francisco in 1968, so I take no responsibility. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. <laughs> see, I never took LSD. You see George Harrison play on the corner? I heard he did that one. No, I did see. I did see a group called. You know, I had a chance to see. I had a chance to see Janis Joplin at the Fillmore. And I passed it up because I thought she'd be like Frank Sinatra. She was going to be around forever. So no, much, no, no, no. So much for that. No, she drinks more, or she drank more than I do, which no, is, that's know, a feat. So what was I? Th so what was I thinking? What was I thinking? You know, you know, she was going to pull a Mama Cass or a Jimi Hendrix any any day. Maybe you know, she's in like, Cuba with Biggie and Tupac and Jim Morrison and Elvis Presley. Uh, probably. It's possible. Down in Jim Beam by the bucket. Who did I see in 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 uh, in the park? I'm trying to... George Clinton. No. Actually, I Bill saw, Clinton. I saw George Clinton in 1968 in Soldier's Field with... We're going to compare shows now? So we can talk about yeah, who we've seen. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, okay. I saw the Rolling Stones at UVA in 2004. I, mean. I saw the Rolling Stones at Burns, Switzerland. I'm, I am what James Paul calls the one-up guy. <laughs> you saw the Rolling Stones at UVA. I saw the Rolling Stones at Burns, Switzerland. So. You went to Switzerland? Lace them That's on. even cooler than seeing the Rolling Stones? Lace, Just going to Switzerland. Lay some warm. Did you, did you eat chocolate? <laughs> no. No Swiss? No. I had the album. Do you eat cocoa? Drink cocoa? Swiss Miss? No, no. Huh? No, there was a Swiss Miss. Did you ever see the Beatles? There was a, no, no, no. Well, no, no. Once. Who, who have you seen? Uh, I mean, I've seen a, a lot of uh, shows, man. I mean, I, go, I usually go to Bonnaroo every year. Lay them on me. I usually go to Bonnaroo every year. Bonnaroo is becoming, why is comedy becoming so big at Bonnaroo? Uh, well, because Bonnaroo, they, Bonnaroo, they, Bonnaroo. they, 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 Put a lot of emphasis on the comedy. They have a whole comedy tent. Why? Why? Conan O'Brien was entertainment, the, man. Conan O'Brien was the MC, but they yeah. didn't have comedy in Woodstock. They should have. George Carlin should have had comedy at Altamont. That would have maybe helped out a lot. <laughs> they did have comedy <laughs> at, at Altamont. Comedy gold. <laughs> Now see, that's that's the problem. You've got all these 911 jokes, but you don't have any good Altamont jokes. Has anybody ever done a good Altamont joke? I heard one the other day, but I can't remember it. The Hell's Angels were there, and they killed! <laughs> Give me shelter, you indeed. Know, I was... Yeah, I was in I was in I was in San Francisco again in 1968. I can't I can't get off the subject, but I was. How you're only 32. That's right. And I went to I went to what we have five minutes left. Okay. What's What's the word? What's the phrase? Stop. Stop phrase. We're gonna run out in five minutes, or we've run out. Okay. Well, we could. Uh, yeah. I well, anyway. So, my so I'm, I was, edit out Chris and just put it. So all I was in, I was at a porn theater, right? Uh, that's easy to believe as well. And I was walking back and forth, and this was back in the day before they had the real stuff. And I'm walking back. Real and, porn? Yeah, like like you know insertion, come shots, the whole thing. Oh yeah, money shots. They just had like simulated, but it was artistic. That's not fun. Black and white. So I'm walking back and forth in front of the theater for some reason I don't know why, and and there's this other guy who's like walking back and forth, and I look over, and he's like. Got the colors, and it's the Hell's Angel. Okay. So I said, maybe I need to walk somewhere else. The Rolling Stone story was better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I once met a Hell's Angel in San Francisco. Yeah. And lived to tell the story. But, so why is Bonnaroo so, I mean, it makes no sense. Music and comedy are like... Music and comedy are hand in hand, race. in my opinion. They're hand in hand. Listen, I've done shows with, with where the music and comedy and like the people that are there... We there. can't really do them together. I mean, I, you know, I've done many a show in between bands. People David Murray Garland does the triple. He does shows like, and, you know, in between sets of, of comedy, of music. You did it last night. Yeah, okay. But as a general rule, I don't think it works because... 
people well, are there to get their drink on. They're there to see the music. They're not there to see the comedy. Right. That's yeah. just my. No, I, I, I believe it. I just mean as far as entertainment goes. I mean. Well, it's all people, entertainment. It's all Yeah, but I mean, most people go to see comedy shows or music. You know, it's not much people going to the opera or you know stuff like that. As you know, it's comparative. theoretically possible that there are people who are going to Bonnaroo just for the comedy. Is that possible? It's theoretically possible. Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. Uh, Aziz Ansari. Yes. He was there uh, this past year. I never make it into the comedy tank because it's got AC and Bonnaroo is really hot. Uh, it's, you know, it's a great place, but it's a terrible place. Now they, now they have showers. It doesn't cool. have AC in that tent? No, no AC outside. It's no. a tent. It's oh, in the comedy tent there's AC. But so all why you don't go to you don't go to the comedy show because it has AC? No, because it's full of people. People like sleep outside to get in. I heard they slept for eight hours outside to get tickets to go see Conan O'Brien. So huge truck pulling up. Conan, if you're watching this... <laughs> oh, I'm, I love Coco. Co Is that what they call him these days? Coco? I, I don't get that whole hero worship thing. It's like, I man, think he's funny. You know, I don't know. The guy has more ticks than a, a Connecticut deer, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, he's got good writers. But he's a wrap writer. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. He's a writer, man. Yeah. For The Simpsons. And I think Saturday Night Live for a little while. Yeah. Conan, I love you. Can I get on your show? When you have one? When you have one? I, I'm, like, I'm burning bridges here. Dane Cook, Lisa Lampanelli, Conan O'Brien, Adam Sandler. It's like, is there anybody left? I, I, need a, I need to get a list of, like, every comedian that I've ripped on. Uh, and you, you give me crap for not wanting to work with Columbine Dave. <laughs> Columbine Dave. That's another show. We'll do that later on. That's, that's like, an insider reference. Are you through? Are we... Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go till we run out of freaking tape here. That's what we're gonna do. So just tell us when you run out of tape, right? Just instead of doing all this annoying. He was need, slapping a fly. Man. We need. To, we need to like agree on the signal. It's like either this or it's like this or you know one or the other. Okay. Um, Coffee really is kicking in on you. Yeah. So Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo. Uh, well, it's, it's supposedly getting really commercial so, so, now, and so all, like, all the. So, yeah. so name cool some, people don't go name to it anymore. Cool shows that you've been to. Uh, well, most of them have been at Bonnaroo. They uh, they do like an all star thing where they take certain bands, put them together. Like um, once I saw, I saw John Paul Jones from Zeppelin with um, Ben Harper and Questlove from The Roots, and they did like a twenty minute version of Days and Confused, and I was just happy to be a part of that. Uh, but I've seen a lot of good shows there, man. Um, over the years, you know, Radiohead. How many years Black have you been Keys. going? Uh, I've gone. Three out of the last four. Didn't go this year because I'm broke. So I'm hoping this podcast takes off. <laughs> the Royal He's on the road. <laughs> We'll pay for your you'll be able to go what's that show out in Cal what's the what's the big uh, thing out in California? Disneyland? <laughs> no, 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 no. The I'm equivalent of Bonnaroo. There's a there's an equivalent of Bonnaroo oh, uh, in California. Burning Man? No, Burning Man's like No, Arizona. Burning Man's in, the, in um, Nevada. Coachella. Coachella. Yeah, Coachella. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I once watched like a five minute video of a guy trying to put his <coughs> his a shoe on at Coachella. Oh, you see, you see. One of my favorite things to do there is just to watch people and guess what drug they're on. It's fun. It's a fun thing to do. Oh. Yeah. I saw a guy fight a tent once. Um, I don't know. It's an outlandish place, but everybody gets along. I don't know. What about um, what about these uh, uh, rainbow things? Have you thought about one of those? Rainbow things? Yeah, rainbow. The no rainbow way. tribes. Well, I'm trying to find a pot of gold. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lepre chase a damn rainbow. <laughs> it's for a gold. leprechauns running around in the forest. <laughs> no, it's like there's like a hippy dippy uh, stuff. You know, it's like. A, Mini Woodstocks or whatever. I mean, I'm not a big festival guy. I just okay. You're not, you're not like you're not following fish around. No, 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 no. Following fish on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Twitter, I don't like being followed in real life. So why would I want to be followed virtually? Well, that that that, that you know. that's. What they I call have a Twitter account, what, but I've never used it. That's what David C. Wingfield calls low following, low low following fruit. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. When, is, when is the interview starting? When is the interview starting? Let me know when the interview starts, man. Just let me know. <laughs>